Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Nike Vaporfly 3. Vaporfly 3 is obviously the successor to the Vaporfly Next% 2 and the latest version of the original super shoe as Nike calls it. It's the all distance racing shoe within Nike's range compared to the Alphafly which is geared more towards those longer distances. It costs £235 in the UK, $250 in the US, weighs in at 206 grams or 7.3 ounces in my UK size 9 and it has an 8mm drop. Nike doesn't give the official stack heights of the shoe but it's fair to say it's bumping right up against that 40mm limit set by World Athletics. The changes made to the Vaporfly 3 compared to the Vaporfly 2 have all really been done to make the shoe a little bit lighter and add a little bit more foam into the midsole of the shoe. Flyknit mesh upper has a more open design in the forefoot there to increase breathability and reduce a little bit of weight there. You've still got the offset laces but some changes have been made to make them put a little bit less pressure on the foot during runs in my experience. Got a little strip of padding at the back there and then an offset heel seam to try and reduce the chance of irritation at the back of the shoe. You've got a ZoomX midsole as you'd expect. It's Nike's Piba based foam. It's a full length ZoomX midsole with a full length scooped carbon plate running through it. You've got a reason designed heel shape on the shoe and then these sidewalls of foam, very small sidewalls in the middle of the shoe just to try and create a little bit more stability late in races in particular. Got the cutouts on the side and on the bottom of the shoe there that shows the carbon plate. Again, that just skims a little bit of weight off the shoe. And overall, the shoe is very slightly lighter across the range on average. This pink shoe actually weighs the same as my uh, proto white version of the Vaporfly 2, but it is a little bit lighter than the orange Vaporfly 2 I have, which was like 213 grams. So while that's not a significant weight saving, what is significant is that Nike has thinned the outsole rubber a little bit by a couple of millimeters and use that space to add more ZoomX foam to the midsole of the shoe which just adds a little bit more of that midsole foam which everyone loves it's soft springy bouncy and that's a good thing in the shoe. The outsole has a similar design to most Nike racing shoes you know you've got good forefoot coverage now with a waffle pattern and then two strips of rubber at the back. It's got this slight stepped design on the shoe which I'm not sure if that's one of the reasons I've noticed a bit more wear on this outsole than I did with the uh, Vaporfly 2 but maybe it just also is that the strips of rubber at the back are a little bit Less big compared to the Vaporfly 2, but overall you've still got fairly good rubber coverage in the key areas, just a bit thinner, and maybe that might impact on durability. We're going to dive into the run test as soon. I should say now, pretty much all of the run testers have now managed to get hold of the Vaporfly 3. It's going to be me and Kieran in this review. Jill, who was in the first run, has been injured, hasn't been able to add any more thoughts, and, and then some of the others are going to add more thoughts on the Vaporfly going forward through race tests and verses with other shoes. So if you're looking for more and more opinions on the shoe, keep your eyes on the channel because more will be coming. But yeah, me and Kieran in this review, other thing to say is that my review sample was sorted by Pro Direct Running. We're not affiliated with Pro Direct Running in any way, but big thank you to them for helping me get a sample of the shoe into review at a time when it was proving very difficult. So a quick word on fit then. I ran in the UK eight and a half, which is my size, and I think I would really recommend going true to size in this shoe. A couple of things to note against the Vaporfly 2, it's roomier. I don't think you get quite the kind of hugging kind of race fit that you had on the Vaporfly 2, this three. If you want a bit more room in the toe box, you want a bit more airy feel across the kind of top of the, sh the shoe here, a little bit more space in the toe box towards the sort of lengthwise, that's good. They don't quite hold as sort of, for me anyway, as sort of tight and secure in the heel. That's not to say I had kind of slipping or real problems. They were fine over the marathon distance when I tested them. But yeah, I would, I would recommend going true to size. But if you like the really tight racy fit that you've got, with the Vaporfly 2 or with the Alpha Fly that you get, this is gonna be slightly different. So I've had absolutely no problems with the fit of the Vaporfly 3 in my normal running shoe size. It's the same size I've been wearing for pretty much every generation of the Vaporfly. It fits well. I've heel locked it from the start just because I went into testing with this shoe with some heel rub concerns from another shoe and I've just left it heel locked since then because I haven't had any discomfort on the top of my foot with tight lacing, which I did sometimes get with previous versions of the Vaporfly. So it does feel like some changes have been made to that offset lacing system. Had a little bit of a uh, heel slippage on the Vaporfly 2 on a couple of early runs, uh, but heel locking did fix it on that shoe and I've not experienced it at all on this shoe. So yeah, overall, been very happy with the fit of the Vaporfly 3 in my normal running shoe size. So I've done 100k in the Vaporfly 3 and honestly it's been an absolute joy to test. Uh, it's really, really fun shoe to run in. I've done three tough workouts, uh, two on the road, one on the track. I've done a 4.8k race as part of a relay and I did the London Marathon in this shoe at the weekend as well. Uh, and 
every single run of them, I've enjoyed the sensation immensely. It's just a really well done super shoe. Throughout those runs, I consistently do feel that the shoe maybe just gives you that little bit more back than maybe anything else on the market, just in terms of the overall package you're getting here. It's not quite as large and springy and propulsive as some of the really chunky shoes like the Alphafly or Adios Pro 3, but the trade-off there is it's so light and nimble on the foot and it just feels fantastic to turn over for far short reps on the track or when attacking corners in races and that kind of thing. And overall, one thing that certainly stood out to me is I do think it's that little bit more cushioned and um, comfortable than the Vaporfly 2. Did notice the extra foam in the midsole and also the upper in general feels that little bit more relaxed. You're still getting a good tight hold and a nice stable feeling on top of the shoe, maybe aided by these sidewalls slightly, but you've also just got a little bit more oomph underfoot than with the Vaporfly 2, which obviously was a very comfortable shoe for long races as well, but maybe has a slightly firmer ride overall. And underfoot, this felt just fantastic in the marathon. So I ran a 2.33 on Sunday and I did the first half in 118 at a fairly controlled pace and then a 115 second half because I wasn't in top marathon shape. I did the whole second half at my marathon pace, really ran myself into the ground, felt you know, absolutely knackered with you know, 7, 8k to go. And it just felt like the shoe felt that little bit more comfortable maybe than the Vaporfly 2 from when I ran my marathon PB in that shoe in in Berlin last year but also just really nice light easy to turn over when your legs are really tired and you don't really feel like you're still picking your feet up it was easy to do it in the Vaporfly while still getting a nice amount of punch and bounce from this midsole so so in the past I talked about how the Alpha Fly just feels so great late in the stage of marathons it's protected the legs you're still booming along doing really nicely on tired legs so the Vaporfly turns over faster this is the Vaporfly 2 but maybe doesn't protect the legs quite as much this is a little bit in the middle, it's still geared much more towards the Vaporfly end of things, but you are getting a little bit more cushioning there, which is slightly more akin to the Alphafly feeling. But then unlike the Alphafly, it's a very light shoe and a really aggressive shoe for attacking short reps, Like, and it also does feel quite stable on those sharp turns. I did one session where I was running a series of 400 meter reps with 200 meter float recoveries uh, on a little road circuit near me with one very sharp hairpin bend, and it just felt fine just steaming into that going around it at speed same thing when i ran that 4.8k race in uh, the essex relays where i was running close to my 5k pvb i ran like a 14.56 so and the first k of it was way too quick it was like a 2.52 went out way too quick trying to stay with the leaders and um again some bends in that race but you can really go hard at them in this shoe feeling very comfortable i never felt i had any kind of wobbliness underfoot uh, and it really does feel light when you do want to pick up the pace and kick at the end of a rep or a race and that's a, a lovely feeling issue especially one that still feels so cushion like this when you are looking at longer stuff or running at marathon pace it really feels very cruisy in the shoe one negative i have noticed is that i have seen a fair bit more wear at the heel of the shoe compared to uh, the vaporfly 2 so i've got a couple of the vaporfly 2s i always do get the same kind of wear just near the back of these strips like inside of those strips uh, just because of the way i run i'm a heel striker um, I think it's been a bit more pronounced in this shoe, like I've done 100k in them. I think after the London Marathon, I got a fair bit of wear on the left shoe in particular. It's flaking off now. I don't think this is the kind of wear that's going to affect performance. It's quite similar to what I get with the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus. It just looks bad. It flakes off and you see a bit of the foam underneath. But I do wonder if the changes made to the outsole to thin out that rubber and maybe reduce the size of it a little bit might compromise durability a little bit. But that's something to look out for for sure. After 100k, I've got a bit more wear than I'd expect. Don't think it's going to be a massive problem in terms of performance, but something to look out for for sure. The grip was pretty good though. I like London Marathon. I was avoiding all manhole covers in that race. It was, was very wet, um, but don't think I necessarily had to do that. It's not the grippiest shoe out there. It's not the grippiest super shoe even. Like you can look at things like the Puma range with their Puma grip, but I haven't had any problems with grip uh, in all the races and fast running I've done in this shoe. So overall, the running experience has been great in the Vaporfly. Like I say, it's the Vaporfly you know and I probably love. Lots of runners do love the shoeing, myself included, just with that little bit more cushion up the foot and a slightly relaxed feeling around the upper that just makes that a bit more accommodating for the really long races whilst it still retains the lightness, the aggression, the more direct feel uh, for those short races and reps. So yeah, all in all, pretty much spot on. So for my run test then, I have done close to 30 miles in the Vaporfly 3. That includes a marathon test. I got up very early the other morning and ran a solo marathon in around about 3.41. Big chunk of that, about 18 miles, was close to my marathon race pace. We're talking about kind of somewhere around the seven minute mile mark, 7.30s, that's how fit I am at the moment. And then around 18 miles, the wheels really badly came off. So I also got to put this shoe through the test of what it's like deep into marathon miles when things aren't going quite so well, which is horrible to do at the time, but it was pretty handy in terms of looking at this versatility of the shoe, how protective it is later on into the miles. Now, first up, I want to talk about step in comfort. This is a shoe fresh out the box. I did that marathon fresh out the box, put it on my feet. It's nice and roomy. It's nice and airy. It feels instantly comfortable the moment you put it on. There's no fussing and no messing and no awkwardness of 
kind of squeezing your foot into it or fighting to get it sort of in place, it just feels good and disappearing the minute you put it on. So there's a lot more room here than something like the, the New Balance SC Elite or the Alpha Fly. And I think that kind of instant comfort puts it ahead for me in that kind of disappearing feel of things like the Adidas Adios Pro 3 as well. Now, like the Vaporfly 2, these are incredibly light on the foot. They're incredibly airy. You know, actually this kind of breathable mesh upper that's been sort of changed on these shoes from the, the two, you know, there's quite a lot of holes in the top. You can literally feel the airflow coming across your toes when you're running. It was pretty windy on the day that I did the marathon test. You are not gonna get a hot foot in this. You will take on water though. There is, if you hit a puddle, there's just, it's basically a massive great gaping holes. You're gonna get wet socks. You know, super shoes do that. That's not a problem, but just to be aware of that. They are roomier, I think, than the Vaporfly 2. There's a bit more room in the toe box. There's a bit more space up across the top of the foot. They don't quite have that tight hugging fit that you would have got with the Vaporfly 2. It's a little bit of a less sort of dialed in racy fit as far as I'm concerned. Now, when it comes to that kind of racy feeling as well, in my tests, I've, you know, in my head, I've been comparing these with the Vaporfly 2. That's, I think, a really sort of key decision as well as the competition. But to me, instantly, they didn't quite feel as racy. There's something about the Vaporfly 2 where you sort of feel tipped up onto your toes when you're, and it encourages you to run at high cadence in your kind of best locked in form and you sort of feel a little bit like it just tilts you up. I don't think the Vaporfly 3 encourage you to lock in that form quite as much. Now, I've also done a side-by-side -side test of these two shoes. There'll be a head-to-head -head on the channel soon. Did a mile where I was wearing one Vaporfly 2, one Vaporfly 3. So there, I think there are some key differences here. There's some changes that have been made that I think make key differences. This, these shoes, the Vaporfly 3, are absolutely a lot softer, a lot squishier. There's a lot more compression of that Zoom X foam than you get with the old generation Vaporfly, which is much firmer, it's much more direct, there's much more ground contact, and that is kind of throughout the foot platform. These, there is just much, much more softness across the foot. And I, you definitely don't feel the toe spring, it, you can feel it. it doesn't quite push you up as kind of in a, such a pronounced way. I think that changes the way these run. And it, I think it could be a good or a bad thing. It really depends on how you want these shoes to perform. I really love the fact that Vaporfly 2 were quite firm and quite direct and they felt like a shoe that you just had to get out and get at it. These shoes are a lot more, I would call, sort of call it democratic, you know. There's, there's more protection. There's a lot more to rock back into. Um, there's a more, lot more softness. So when my form got really ragged in that marathon test, I was really happy to have a little bit more softness, a bit more squish, and a bit more overall protection. There's margins here, but the geometry of the shoe, there's a little bit more in the midfoot coming back here. And I think there's a bit more back into the heel in terms of width. Uh, the stack heights are obviously the same, the drop is the same, but I just think that gives you a little bit more of a platform. So when you are running ragged, the Vaporfly 3 is gonna look after you a little bit more than the Vaporfly 2. That is a positive thing if you maybe are gonna run in them and you know you might be at a risk. If you really like that kind of minimal strip back, kind of really zippy, you know, really direct kind of feel of the Vaporfly 2, I think that's been dampened down a little bit here. And one of the things I, I thought was really nice about the Vaporfly 2 is they had a point of difference over some of the other sort of carbon races in as much as they, they started to feel a bit more minimal um, compared to things like the big stack of the Alpha Flies or you know, even the Endorphin Pro 3. They just felt a little bit more like, wow, there's not much on the foot and you've got to go for it. I think this sort of has taken that away in some respects. They're just, I, I don't quite feel as fast in them personally. And I feel they're a little bit more sinky. And I, I have to say, I think I prefer running the Vaporfly 2. That's not to say this isn't a good shoe, it is. It's still, you know, the first 17, 18 miles that I did on that marathon test, fresh out of the box, it ran like a dream. There's still plenty of punch. There's still plenty of response. You are still getting some toe spring. I think there's brilliant comfort. They do a really good job. I think there's marginally less stability in this one. I found it to be, because of the softness, it's a little bit more wobble, particularly if you're kind of rocking back a bit. So when I got really deep into that marathon test, you know, for the last six miles, I hit the struggle bus really badly. I was, I was really tired, I wasn't moving very well. I was dropped to proper plod, dropped to like nine minute miles, nine and a half minute miles. And that was, I was landing much more flat footed, much more back on my heels. And one thing I wanted to see was whether or not you've got really good foot protection from this, from the kind of, I guess the impact protection fatigue, which you don't get from the Vaporfly 2 really that much. These definitely offered that more. They were much more protective. They were much more uh, cushioned and comfortable to run in when you're running really badly. You still did have some foot fatigue coming up, I'd argue they're still not quite as protective, something like maybe an Endorphin Pro 3, but they did a better job, I think, than the Vaporfly 2, and I think that's gonna make this shoe a little bit more versatile. And if you were looking at the Vaporfly 3, you know, there's an argument to say they were sort of maybe better at the shorter, faster end of the spectrum of the supercarbon kind of race shoes. They were great for marathons as well, but they were really good 
at going kind of um, shorter and faster as well. And I think this shoe now is kind of almost even better at the longer end. It will still cope at the faster end, but I think that's really gonna help some people be able to run with more confidence over the marathon distance. As of now, I'd say that the Vaporfly 3 is the shoe to beat for me at pretty much any distance. I liked it even more than I actually expected to. It's just really hitting that Goldilocks zone of energy return, weight, cushioning, propulsion, that just everything you want in a super shoe is very finely balanced in the shoe to make it pretty much perfect for races of any distance. When it comes to distances you're choosing, uh, it's more of a close call if you're looking at the marathon in particular, just because those the shoes like the Alpha Fly 2 and the Adios Pro 3 just give you that really booming level of propulsion that I do think Will help a lot of people in the marathon I, I think it's a bit of a wash between the shoes more maybe to the kind of runner and what you want from a shoe for the event like as someone who has got a high cadence who gets very shuffly late stages the lightness of the shoe feels great but then also the booming bounce of something like the alpha i felt great when i ran a sub 230 in valencia last year so i think it's a bit of a wash at the marathon level you can certainly look at those chunkier shoes that are going to give you maybe that little bit of extra protection and bounce but I don't think you're really losing that with a vape fly and lots of people just like a lighter shoe and this feels very light and it is still giving you a lot back in terms of bounce and all that. So yeah, a bit of a close call there. Then for shorter distances, certainly things like 5K, 10K, this is a superior racing shoe, I think, to those bigger shoes. They are still great shoes. I mean, sometimes talk about this like they're bad racing shoes and that's a mistake. Like the Adios Pro 3 is an amazing 5K racing shoe. The Alpha Fly 2 is an amazing 5K racing shoe, but I prefer having something lighter like the Vaporfly on my feet for those races. This is certainly what I'd be looking for for those races. And I do think lots of runners will prefer it for the marathon as well. Looking at the new batch of uh, races that have come out this year, it is, I think, the best of them. The Hoka Rocket X2, I think, is a really nice shoe, really good shoe for short distances. I think the Vaporfly is going to have the edge deeper into long races. I think you get more back from the foam plate combination in this shoe and a slightly higher drop. So I do think, although the Hoka Rocket X2 is a great shoe, I think the Vaporfly has got it beat. Socking Endorphin Elite is a tricky shoe to rate because it does hurt my feet a bit. <laughs> Um, I do think it's very efficient and effective at, when you're running really fast. I, I think it, you know, is as good as anything really in terms of producing the goods at races of any distance. It's just a slightly less accommodating uh, experience than the Vaporfly. It's quite a harsh experience. In fact, over 10K, I felt like it was beating up my feet quite a lot, much more than the Vaporfly did at all over the course of a marathon. So it's maybe a shoe that would just suit some people really well and others not so well, but it has got a really good midsole that booms you along and a very aggressive uh, geometry that tips you forward really nicely. Just prefer the feel of the bait fly uh, underfoot myself. And the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, which I do love, but it's such an interesting shoe, but it's, it just feels like a risky shoe to wear for a marathon, especially as a heel striker like myself. It's, it is a bit more of an unknown quantity. That said, every run I've done in it, I have really liked it, but I think the bait fly is the easier shoe to recommend just because I think it will work for so many runners, whereas the Mizuno is a little less stable and might not work that well for lots of people. So, and then looking at slightly older shoes, and I think this is the problem the Vaporfly 3 has that really every new carbon shoe on the market has, even one as good as the Vaporfly 3, which is there are so amazing racing shoes going for in sales nowadays from last year's batch of racing shoes, and it's still very close to call and performance. Something like the Vaporfly 2, let's talk about that. Like, I do think this is a slightly better shoe all round, but the Vaporfly 2 is very, very close. It's a shoe I've run my marathon PB in, my 5K PB in. I'd have no problem with that being the only shoe I have in my wardrobe for races, and you can pick it up for a lot less uh, than the Vaporfly 3, or you probably already have the Vaporfly 2, in which case I wouldn't be dashing out to go and buy the Vaporfly 3. And it's, it's not the only older shoe that, you know, it's really hard to say it's worth buying the shoe over for a lot more money. Like the Adios Pro 3 is often in sales, the Endorphin Pro 3 is often in sales, the Metaspeed Sky Plus. It's a big market now, carbon shoes, and it's good because making it a bit more democratic. You can get a very good super shoe now for £100 or even less sometimes. And I think if you are looking at that kind of uh, price gap, then I'd probably say it's better value to go and buy one of the older shoes because they are still so amazing. And the progressions you're getting these days are pretty marginal. It's not like when you got your first Vaporfly and it was a massive leap forward. Things like the Adios Pro 3, you put on this, you might like it more, you might think it's a better shoe, but it's gonna be quite close. And uh, you might save a lot of money or indeed already have a really, really good super shoe. Maybe when you come around to then buying your next one, if you just want the best of the best, I think it's the Vaporfly 3 myself. And if money's no concern, by all means go out and buy it. I think it's an amazing shoe, but if we're looking for value in a market that's not really known for value, there are better value options. Perhaps the only real decision left on performance would be over the marathon, do you want a slightly cushier, uh, more propulsive shoe rather than this lighter one? Personally, despite being a big Alpha Fly flam, fan, Alpha Fly flam, Alpha Fly fan um, in the past, and even to this day, having run a very good marathon in the Alpha Fly 2 last year, I probably would lean towards the Vaporfly 3 myself for my next big PB attempt, whatever that is. My verdict then, Nike has made another great race shoe, particularly I think for the marathon distance. 
Whether it's better than the Vaporfly 2, I think that really depends on what you're looking for. So for me, I think they've lost a shade of that kind of all out raciness, that kind of directness. I really like the firmness that sort of made you kind of have a high tick over, high cadence, and just sort of made you have to think like, I have to be in good form to run in these shoes. It almost encouraged you to do so. I think you don't have to do that as much in this shoe. Now, that what you you know what you're taking away there, you're getting back in another area because this is a much more democratic shoe. It's much more capable when you're not running particularly sort of good form. And so I, I think it maybe extends that kind of versatility of it overall. And that said, they are still light, they are still punchy, they are still comfortable, but you're getting a bit of extra protection thrown in too. Now up against some other shoes, I think you get more energy from the Alpha Fly still, and I think if you're looking for something, you get a bit more kind of cushion platform from that. I'd, I'd still personally, I'm just, I'm torn. I'd, I'm not sure I like them better than the Vaporfly 2. I do like the roomy uppers. I like the airiness at the top of the, the foot. In the, you know, I'd love those, those uppers are, are kind of, I think, a step on, but I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not con as convinced by kind of the midsole. And I think you've lost a bit of that toe spring and a little bit of the punch. That said, if you wanted more softness without losing too much of what's good about the Vaporfly, about its energy, you know, that's still there. And this shoe will definitely tick your boxes. If you really liked that more direct shoe with the old Vaporfly, then I think, you know, go and get yourself some old Vaporflies and get them at a bargain price. I wouldn't invest in this if that was the case, if you really enjoyed the Vaporfly too. So that is it. That is our review of Vaporfly 3. Like I said, we'll have a lot more Vaporfly 3 content coming with thoughts from other run testers, race tests versus other carbon super shoes. That's all to come. So dive into the comments if there's anything you want to hear about in particular. Please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, um, and we'll see you next time.